Alrighty traders, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and welcome to the uh, the Forex uh, Battleground. We're going to take a look at the uh, trade opportunities that are already setting up great for this week. We can go take a look at a couple of things. I'm, all, I'm also going to go ahead and take a look at uh, some cryptos as well. You'll get a quick review on cryptos too. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we get started, I want to make sure that everyone is uh, subscribed to this channel. First, to number one, number two. I would like you to go ahead and smash the like button so we can get this video out to as many people as possible. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at some trade opportunities that are setting up overall for the week and then also take a look at uh, what the opportunities on cryptos as well. So with that being said, traders, I'll see you right after this. Alrighty, traders, well, welcome back. And yes, we're going to get, take a look at the opportunities this week. And I really like the US dollar CAD and I really like the, uh, the, uh, the Swiss, uh, the Euro Swiss. Uh, those are the two pairs that I'm really focused on because I've got some uh, quite a bit of trades in those positions already. We're going to talk about those setups and what it means for us and, of course, what it means for you if you are following those pairs as well. Now, every time, every bit of the technical analysis I do here inside the trading session right here, can be applied to any currency pair. So not am I talking about uh, a particular currency pair that I'm focused on, but keeping in mind that, uh, that the technical analysis or the, the way I break down the chart can be applied to any currency pair. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. As we go to the chart right here, um, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and flip open the Euro Swiss franc right here and take a quick look at the Euro Swiss franc. Now we had a nice little move to the upside in the last a few days, uh, sorry, a few hours actually. Uh, and this is the reason why right here. If you take a look right here, we had a downward swing. Market went ahead and created a low. We had a pullback to the backside of this trend line. A great place that traders would, go, would start looking to go ahead and sell. Now, a lot of the times we do look for support and resistance that we can trade both support and resistance. And so it's important to know that. So as we bounce off this resistance right here, the market drops back all the way down to the 1.618. Now, for those that follow me and follow me quite a bit uh, in all my analysis, you know I like to look for wave structure. And so what we're looking for is wave structure in the form of a wave one, two, three, four, five. And then we're also looking for corrective waves, which, is, uh, which are in ABC moves. Now, in this case now, with price moving down to where it is right now and, and hitting the 1.618 right here, we're now looking for pullback. And I said to traders that once we get to this level, Start looking for buying opportunities. Start looking for buying opportunities. Now, that buying opportunities can be on any type of strategy that you use, all right? But it will be placed on the lower time frame. And so when we look at this right here, you're always going to pay attention to the lower time frame because, remember, if we're ever going to see a change in rever or a, a, a trend reversal on the higher time frame like we're seeing right now, it's going to start off on the lower time frame. So if you go to like the 15-minute time frame, you'll see a change in trend on the 15. The same thing will apply for the one hour. The same thing will apply for the, for the four hour. So it'll take time as it builds up trend reversals on these smaller time frames. And so as we go down to uh, the 15-minute time frame on this, we already see that we've broken through this trend line going across right here, which means that we're starting to show, show some upside swings. And so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to take this trend line that we've seen right here, and I'm going to look at the 15-minute time frame and start looking for some buying opportunities. Now, let me go ahead and say this first. When the market did create that support level, right, at the 1.618 of that uh, downward swing, then what did we start looking for? We started thinking about buying. Now, you could use any sort of trade opportunity that you want to go ahead and trade. You could go ahead and say, um, I'm going to use this type of strategy where I'm cost averaging into the market. And you could go ahead and start cost averaging. That's when you're trying to pick the tops and bottoms. And, the, and, and, and uh, the best place to pick top of, tops and bottoms are, the, are, the, uh, are at these extensions of these FIBs. So these FIB extensions create those opportunities for us to go ahead and trade at these turning points of the market, which is great, right? Now, as we go back to the 15-minute time frame right here and we look at the charts on the 15, we now see that if anyone started buying over here, you're definitely in the money. And that's great. But now how much, you know, for traders that are trading intraday and have just come to the charts for the first time, 
What is it that we're going to start looking for right here? Well, the first thing we have to go ahead and start paying attention to here is the fact that the mark has now uh, gone ahead and created a wave structure with inside that downward swing. Because now we're going to start off with this nice little swing or nice little correction as you start going back up again because uh, we have to pay attention to the, the lower time frame swing sets. So you can see right here, here we have a wave one, here we have a wave two, and anytime the market goes up and is very aggressive right here, I don't even have to go ahead and count those waves on the inside. I know that this is probably going to be my third wave right here. So this is wave one, this is wave two, now we've got wave three up here, and this is wave four. So that's how it looks like. Now, what's interesting right now, to tell whether we're going to have some nice little, still some strong little moves in the, uh, the Euro Swiss, is looking to see where is price trading at at the moment right now. Now, I, I did explain this inside my trading room the, this morning, and I said if the price moves to around about 1.0453, there's a very good chance that we're in an extended third wave. This is an internal extended third wave, which looks like something like this. This will be a wave one right here. All right, there it is. Wave two down here. Okay, I'm going to just go ahead and circle it. Then that would mean that this would be a wave three internal. Then we'll look for a pullback wave four. And then, of course, wave five will go ahead and extend itself right here. So these internal wave structures are then going to create this larger wave three for us. Okay, so what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the FIPS, and it's this one right here that I'm mostly in, interested in, is that one right here. Okay, now if you take a look over here, look at the price target right there. The price target is at that 1.0453, right there. And so therefore, if the market does go to this level, then I will expect a short dip and a continuation of a rally in the Euro, in the Euro Swiss. And so it's important we are about, uh, looks like not far, about five pips or so away from confirming that uh, the target's been hit. And again, if it hits that target, that is an indication based on past history and based on what we've seen before, that price is going to go ahead and do something like this, where it's going to dip down south. After it hits that level, it's going to hit that level, then we're going to have a dip. And this is going to be considered this inside swing right here. This is going to be my wave one, two. This is three right here. So this will be then my four wave dip. And then, of course, the fifth wave will go up. Okay. So that's one. Ring. And so if that's going to be the case, then I can go ahead and look and see where my fifth wave target is going to be. If the market does pull back, I can identify, identify that target to the upside. So I do like the, uh, the, I do like the Euro Swiss. And another thing about the Euro Swift right here is if I go back to the uh, uh, the four hour chart, I can start looking at seeing what does the bigger move look like. If this is a correction move that we're in, how much further can we go north? Okay, what is the big? Well, traders, this is it right here. This low that we've at that we at right here, that's where price is going to go ahead and target because this is the wave one. This, uh, sorry, this is a wave one, this is a wave two. So price will come back to test that wave one right here, right about there. So we know that the Euro Swiss, now I'm not saying it could go, it's going to go all the way up to that, but it has an upside potential of another 255 pips going long. Remember, we're talking about the Euro Swiss right here. It's not like the pound JPY, where we've got trading ranges of 300 pips, uh, daily trading range of 300 pips a day. Uh, not that the JPY is, uh, the pound JPY is a, a 300 pip daily trading range, but it's not as volatile as the, uh, the, the pound JPY. Now, we also spoke about it, and if you remember very close, uh, very carefully, we also spoke about the, uh, the Swiss National Bank. And we said that the Swiss National Bank will not allow, will do, well, let's put it this way, they do not want to have a strong currency pair. So as we got stronger against the, uh, the, 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 the Euro Swiss, as the, uh, the, the, the Swiss got strong against the Euro, but also got strong against the New Zealand and the Aussie, uh, the, 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 the commentary from the, the Swiss National Bank is that they are not only just concerned about the, uh, or these folks in, in on the Euro-Swiss cross, but they're also focusing on every other major traded against the Swiss. So it means across the board, they will intervene. If you go to the uh, New Zealand-Swiss, you'll probably see the same thing, a nice little bounce and an upside, upside move. 
and the same thing with the Aussie Swiss and so forth and so forth. And so paying attention to the Swiss crosses right now may create opportunities on a lot of other currency pairs. Now, if we take a look at all of these currencies, now if you take a look at Aussie Swiss, we do have news coming out this evening. They're looking at you raising, uh, sorry, keeping the rates unchanged for the Aussies this evening at 10.30. And if that's going to be the case, guess what? We, we could get some volatility, but it also could be in a price action per, per move that could give us a further rally in Aussie Swiss, but maybe just a correction move in tonight's news. Let's go take a look at that quickly and jump into that. Now, um, hey, good. We got your, uh, we got a trade right here from South Africa. Happy to be here uh, with you always. Uh, fantastic. Well, good to be here. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you are here. Thank you. Appreciate that. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's go take a look at our setup on the Aussie Swiss right here because, again, this does uh, create opportunity across the board. Now, take a look there. You see the Aussie Swiss? Nice little rally. Let's pull this up over here. So we had a nice little rally off that, but look where the market dropped back down to. We went all the way back down to a 2.618. So the Aussie Swiss has been really aggressive. Now let's do this. Let's go ahead and clean up the charts a little bit right here and start all fresh again. So um, let's go ahead and do this and delete. Oh, I, I did it already? Oh, okay, good. Uh, delete all the uh, the drawings right here. And so let's go take a look and see what's going on here. Uh, the first thing I want to do is go to a daily time frame. Okay. And then on the daily time frame, I'll go ahead and put in some levels. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this level seems to be a very important level right here. Pretty much where price is at right now. I'm going to go ahead and put in a line across there. There it is there. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a line coming from the highs there. Let's do this. All right, let's take it from the top here. Let's work our way back down. All right, so this is what the trend looks like right about there. Okay, so we've broken to uh, broken and we're on the right side of the trend. But not only have we broken and we moved to the right side of the trend, but take a look over here that we've also now seen this level of support right here becoming a factor right here. And so as the market breaks up, takes out the previous highs, this looks like a nice little bull crown sitting up at the right tip right here, looking for price to go ahead and move back up again. So if that's the case, that's the case, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got here as I zoom in closer up. So if I zoom in closer up right here, uh, you see a lot of rally here. If I put in some fibs from the bottom to the top right here, we have to see if this makes sense. Let's see if it does. Okay. Uh, all right, so we've got our first swing going up right here. Uh, we'll be looking for price to go back up to retest this level. That's the 1.618. That's where we're expecting mar the market to go to, right? And so if we look over here, we can see that we had a wave one, wave two. Now, normally when the market comes back below this wave uh, high right here, we normally chase after that low there because the market is looking for a deeper correction move. So that makes me think here that, hey, listen, after all of this rallies that we've had today, could this be a running flat? And it's very possible that the market's not going to take out that low. And instead of an irregular flat, we're, in, we're heading into a running flat. Now, there's definitely ways to check that out. I'm not going to go into that in this session right now. But there's definitely ways that you can look at the internal structure that can tell you whether or not we're in a running flat or an irregular flat. But I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. I'm going to go ahead and say that with the Aussie data coming out this evening, let's go take a look at the lower time frame because ultimately what we're thinking here is we're thinking bullish. But we've got to get the confirmation of the lower time frame to confirm that we are bullish by looking at the internal swings on a 15-minute time frame. Even the one hour can give us that confirmation. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to jump into a one-hour chart. and We'll start off with that first. And if I don't have enough information here, which doesn't look like I do, I might have to move down to a 15. And so what I'm looking for you right here is I'm looking for the waves, those wave structures right here. And so if I look over here, I see wave one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we had a, a, a sub wave move from there to here. Then you notice that the price got to the 1.618 right here. Okay, let's go ahead and move from there to there. Okay, now. Take a look right here. We're at the 1.618 as well. So hold on a second. 
that's not normally the case because when we normally get a fifth wave move, we normally expect the price to move and move up to a 127. And at the 127, then only then we're expecting the market to go ahead and pull back as a fifth wave hit. But it's not happening. The market went rallied up all the way to the 1.618. And so what we do here is we're anticipating now this to be an internal, internal extended third wave. And so what we're going to do here is we, we're actually going to pay attention to now the next upside move like this. And so what I would be doing here on the Aussie Swiss is I would be anticipating correction. This is going to, um, I'll go ahead and label it as well. And I'm going to label it right here as a wave one, two. This is the internal structure, three. Now we're looking for a wave four. And a wave four can come back to retest wave one. So I'm going to put it down all the way to the wave one right here. So that could be my wave four. And then wave five going up right here. And again, I'm looking for wave five to go all the way up to my 1.27 right here. Now, this is what's important to note. If this is an internal structure, then remember that we have not completed our setup right here. Where we've got a wave one. This is the large wave. Wave two as the second wave. All right, let's go ahead and mark that off. And so if this is the internal wave three, which is the external wave three, then that means over here at the fifth wave is going to be, that's what's going to be my big wave three. So that means the market's still going to dip and it's going to have another rally. Now, remember this line that you've seen right here. Okay, that line is actually representing a very important level. Let's go take a look and see what that line looks like. Okay, I'm going to go down to the, I go back to the uh, the four hour. So the four hour, we marked off that line, and that line was a very significant, a very significant level right here. In fact, I might have to go to the daily to show you that. All right, there it is. So that's the line right here that's very significant. So if we break above this line, all right, and that is priced at, let's take a look at that price. If we break above uh, six, uh, 65, 48, and I, I want to make sure that that is the line that we're looking at right here. Yes, 65, 48. So if we break above that, which, by the way, our fifth wave has indicated that we're going to get to that level. But if we break through that level, then we're on our way towards the next target. And the next target is up here at the top. Now, I'm not saying it's going to go, go to that level in one big swoop. What I'm saying is we're going to have this. Price is going to do that. It's going to come back. It's going to start waving up like this. And we're going to start trading off. So we can look like on a one hour, maybe even a four hour, we can look for these swings to start char targeting this right here because we should see a five wave structure going off to this target right here. So why do I have I gone through all of this stuff right now with you? Why have I gone and broken it down the way I have right now? I want you to pay attention, lean, lean in. So the reason why I've broken it down, okay, is because of this reason. When we look at the wave structure, the way it's set up right now, and we see how the market has indicated that we have a five-wave possible structure that could take us all the way to the 1.6 rate of the larger swing, then what we can do is we can use the, 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 the swings on the larger time frame as turning points in the market so we know when to go ahead and start buying or selling at those levels. And we also understand what we can anticipate. So if we are in the wrong direction, we should understand and know where our next level of resistance or support is going to be at. So that we can go ahead and rebuy back in or resell, back, uh, resell again at those levels to get us a better cost average approach on that. To be able to make some profit or get out of break even if we're in the wrong direction. So there's a lot of reasons why we have to understand these turning points. And, and, and there are so many naive traders out there that don't even pay attention to the larger time frame, don't under, understand what's going on with the market cycles, and just go ahead and trade what they've seen on the smaller time frame, and they get themselves into trouble. And I've had, trust me, over the 25 years that I've been doing this trading, I have had many traders come to me and get into positions that they are stuck in and I don't know what to do. And so they have to go ahead and start evaluating, all right, where they're at based on larger time frames, based on swing structure, to understand what the next move is going to be. Without knowing that, you will be left alone and you will be lost in, in the market. 
So it's very important to understand that. All right, good. Let's go ahead and jump into um, another one right here. I want to go into US dollar uh, CAD. And US dollar CAD, we have been talking about US dollar CAD for a while. I know you, uh, you guys have, some of you have been following me uh, with my trades and that, and I've been short on US dollar CAD. And we're finally getting some action on this, but we're certainly not out of the woods yet. Uh, there's no ways that we're out of the woods because we had this little rally, and I, I might need to go down to the one hour time frame to show you this. But this is right here. We had this little dip right here, then we had this another rally right here taking out that high. So we, we thought we had a good wave structure. All this was was just a retest of that trend line. All right? There's a trend line right here. And so it came back here and bounced off that, but we're finally getting a bit of breakout here. Now, some might say, well, big dog, you might have to do an adjustment right here to that to those lows, and and rightfully so. But I do feel that when the markets are test when the markets are trading above this trend line with the body closes, uh, I feel a lot more confident that uh, we're either bouncing or we're breaking through that level. And so as I test those bodies right here on this trend line, and I'm seeing how price is now closing below that, closed bodies are closing below that on this one hour, it gives me a little more confidence that, yes, we are starting to see a break of this trend. And there you can see on the four hour as well. In fact, the four hour shows you pretty nicely right here how the markets come back to these levels and we are, the, the bodies are staying above. Okay, We're getting wicks breaking below, but now suddenly on the four hour right here, you can see a break of that trend. Uh, a trend line right here and so i'm not going to get too excited until i get my lower time frame confirming the swings uh, the swings so let's go do this now now reminder when we do break uh, this trend line the market's going to head down to this trend line right that's what it does it breaks one trend line goes to the other trend line but it's going to move in waves and that's what the important part is right here it's going to move in waves so let's go ahead and take a look at the lower time frame right here and um Let's do a, a camera. Let's just do a full screen on the charts so I can do a camera adjustment right here. All right, good stuff. All right, we can. All right, we're good. So here is uh, the here is the one hour. And looking at the one hour right here, I'm actually going to break it down to the 15 minute. Let's go to the 15 right here. So here's the 15 minute time frame, and this is what I'm going to pay attention to because if these cycles complete, then we should be heading towards uh, a deeper downside move. So this is wave one. Here is my wave three down here. All right, there's a wave three. And so here is the wave five right here. So this is what I'm going to be looking for right now. And this is going to tell me whether we're going to be in a nice little big strong bearish move. Or whether we are going to actually start seeing price do something different. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark off this. That is my 1.6, uh, 1.27 right here. So I'll be watching that e level right here. And I certainly would not be selling as I get down to this level because I'm expecting bounce. And the bounce will come back to take out the wave 4, which is going to be at 128.06. But if I do break below that and, a, and the market continues to work its way down south, then the next level is going to be important for me to note here is this level right there. And that is priced around about 127.46. So if we get, if price pushes down to here, then this means this is an extended wave three. And an extended wave three would mean that we are going to be stronger bearish overall. And so it will take out the lows. We may even get a little adjustment and that's fine. But we're going to see this market drop down even further. And so that's what I'm looking for right here. For me to be excited about what the markets are doing at this point in time, will have to be dependent on whether or not we get that breakout. If we get that breakout of that trend line and it goes down and hits that 1.618 and not just the 127, but goes down to the 1.618, that's going to encourage me now on any pullback to go ahead and start committing myself to more sales on the US dollar CAD because now we're expecting price to go ahead and fall further down south. Okay. So that's going to be really exciting. And that's why I said this is great, creating a great opportunity. Because if we go back down to the uh, the four hour right here, remember, traders, we talk about trade opportunity. If you go ahead and compress your charts, take a look over here. Yeah, we have a large wave one, wave two. This is wave three, 
down here, and then this is wave four. So which means that we're in a wave five move, and if this is going to be the resistance, and we see dollar falling further, dollar is going to fall against the uh, the Canadian back down to around about one point sixteen uh, forty two. So that could be about a about a thousand one hundred pips to the downside, and that's what the opportunity is. Now, if you're thinking about maybe just consolidation, yep, we could be hitting some inside consolidation too. And that's going to be about a 300 pip downside move towards the support level of the consolidation. Because this is what the consolidation looks like right here. We've got support over here. We've got resistance up here at the top. So we've gone ahead and tested this multiple times right here. And we've just gone ahead and retested it again. And so price is going to fall. It's going to fall back down to this support right here. And that's going to be, at a, that's going to be about a 300 pip drop. If it breaks through there, we're chasing after this level right here. And that's at 116. And that should give us about 11, 000, uh, sorry, 1,100 pip opportunity to the downside. All right. Now, traders, uh, while you are, uh, while you are uh, paying attention to what's going on right here, I also want to make sure that you guys are subscribed to this channel because we do a, a pip grab a trading show on a Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday where we look to ca capture 20 pips out of the market. In fact, our trade copy is doing absolutely fantastic. We're over 120% for the year already. All the details are down in the description. Check out the, the description below. Uh, we've got something like 1,600 pips, 16,000 pips that have been generated already uh, from this trade cop here. So check out the description below. We do talk about trade setups inside the Pip Grabber Trading Show, which is on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. It is at 11.30, I believe, we start. I think that's the time, Cameron, right? Um, but we start at 11.15, and that is on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Details are in the description down below. Make sure you check that out and uh, see what's going on. And while you're down there, don't forget to go ahead and smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel as well because uh, we want to make sure this video gets out to as many people as possible. Now, going to cryptos. Taking a quick look at cryptos right here. And let's go take a look and see what's going on right here. First thing, I'm going to go to Bitcoin and then Ethereum. Okay. And let's talk about what's going on right here because we've had a big move to the downside. Look at this. 42,000. We had Bitcoin that broke down to 42,000. A lot of people are getting concerned about where Bitcoin's going. And, and so if you look over here in the, in, the, uh, in the swings that we have right here, we are still staying above this level. And that level is at, what's that, uh, 39,000? Uh, yep, 39. So we're still trading above 39,000 on Bitcoin. And so the, the concern here is, is this actually a move that's going to take us long-term bearish, or at least the mid-term bearish, and then we're going to start looking for some upside moves? Well, I always look at swing structure. So let's pay attention to the swing structure because this move that we're seeing right here is always going to come down to swing. And, and, and I know that a lot of traders have looked at this and said, well, could this just be a double tops? And then Bitcoin's going to go down further. It's going to break the 20, uh, what is that, uh, 28,000? And head down to maybe uh, 15, 15 and 10,000 a game. Um, I don't know. Look, you know, this is a completely, completely new sort of uh, environment that we're trading, right? Because there's a lot of volatility and there's a lot of hype that creates these movements in the market. But the one thing that I can say that we've been trusting for a long time is our technicals. And so I'm going to continue to trust my technicals. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a line from the bottom right here, and I'm gonna draw it across right here. And so I'm seeing that we're still in this uptrend. We haven't broken above that low. And if we do break below that low, I wanna go ahead and see what's going on. I might even start buying. If we get below 39,000, I might be a buyer in Bitcoin, major buy in Bitcoin, um, but we'll have to wait and see. But, but what I have to do here is traders, I have to go ahead and trust that this what I've drawn in on the chart right here is actually showing me where the markets are going, where the turning points are going to be, uh, markets are going to be. And if I look over here, I'm still seeing Bitcoin showing a wave one, two. Remember, this is a large wave one and a large wave two. Okay. Now, this is an internal wave one, two, three. And so we're in a wave four. Now, if we're in a wave four, then we've got to stay above this level right here. And that price there is at 52,900. So 52,900. 
Now you can see that we traded at 49 and we had this big spike down here to about 42,000 right here. And again, this could be just a wash and rinse. Wash and rinse keep getting, getting people out of the market because there's a lot of uh, speculation going on on Bitcoin right now. This could be a wash and rinse. And are we seeing the same thing with the uh, Ethereum? Because Ethereum is obviously the, uh, the next big brother on the, on the floor, right? Are we seeing the same sort of movement out of Ethereum? Well, let's take a look and see. Oops. Let's go to uh, Ethereum. Pop open Ethereum right here. And look at Ethereum. Ethereum is staying pretty solid right here. In fact, when we saw Bitcoin dashing down, Yes, we've had a bit of it, but look how it stayed over here. It's pretty solid at this level right here at about 4,000. So if that's the case then, what does Ethereum and Bitcoin look like against each other? Let's go take a look at that. So let's go to ETH and uh, Bitcoin. And let's take a look and see how they are uh, traded against each other right here. There we go. Well, according to my swing structure right here, here's wave one, here's wave two, here's wave three going up right here. And so it looks like we're in a, we're in a trend, right? In a bullish trend. And this bullish trend is telling us that Ethereum is in fact going to get stronger against Bitcoin. So which means that Ethereum's holding its ground against uh, this, this mark reaction. And Bitcoin's getting weaker, but Ethereum's actually getting stronger. Uh, well, not stronger, but it's maintaining its strength, right? And so if we look over here, do we expect that Ethereum will start losing a bit of ground against Bitcoin and Bitcoin will outrun Ethereum at some point? Well, the answer to that is yes. And it's going to happen when this happens. Look at this. Wave one, two, three up here. So we're going to get a pullback. There's going to be a pullback. So there's going to be a little bit of adjustment with Bitcoin. Bitcoin may gain, gain a little strength. But then Ethereum is going to blow up again. It's going to go up to this level. This is my fifth wave right here. And if it goes further than that, then we may be in an extended third wave, which means Ethereum is definitely going to get stronger. So the way I'm looking at the chart right now tells me that we might have some short-term pullback on Bitcoin. Bitcoin might get a little bit stronger against Ethereum, but in a very short, in a short period. But then Ethereum is still set up right now, at least for this time. Ethereum is still set up that it's going to get stronger against Bitcoin. And therefore, that's the reason why I've invested a lot of my capital into Ethereum, because I'm anticipating that. All right. I'm anticipating that Ethereum is going to give me more buck for my money over this midterm rallies that we're going to see than what we're going to get from Bitcoin. Now, the more money I make from Ethereum, I could at some point make a decision to go ahead and transfer. When I start seeing Ethereum hitting, hitting that fifth wave and now going to start looking for a co big correction move against Bitcoin, then it might be a smart idea for me to go take my Ethereum and move it into Bitcoin. As Bitcoin gets stronger than Ethereum, we can have this change of power, right? And so that might be a smart idea when it gets to that level. Right now, the best play for me right now is to stay in Ethereum because I'm going to get uh, a lot more buck out of my money on that. Now, what's really excited about this is altcoins, okay? And I'm not going to go into the altcoins and talk about the altcoins at the moment right now because we do have, we are going to have a session that we are going to talk about altcoins, okay? And, and by the way, Cameron just reminded me, and thank you, Cameron, for doing that. Cameron just reminded me about the, uh, the Pip Grabber trading show. We're doing so many of these shows. I've got to keep up with the times. He reminded me, and he's, by the way, the producer of these shows, and he reminded me that the... Um, the 8 o'clock show uh, in, uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is the Pip Grabber Training Show. So we've actually moved our time to 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Pip Grabber Shows. At, uh, and that is, of course, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then we do have crypto shows on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And that is at 11.15. All right, I think we moved that to 11.30. So to remember that crypto shows is on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we will talk about the altcoins because we're going to have the conversation tomorrow. So I'm not going to talk a lot about the altcoins now, but I'm going to let you know that tomorrow's show at 11.15 Eastern Standard Time, when we talk about cryptos, you may want to be in that. So mark of your calendar, definitely want to be in that because we're going to talk about altcoins and what is the next opportunity, what is the next best opportunity to do to go ahead and get in on. All right. Um, so when I look at this chart, I just want to lead you in this. When I look at this chart right here, this chart's telling me that 
we could absolutely see some strength in the altcoins coming up very, very soon as Bitcoin starts recovering against the move that it's just had. And then when that happens, then we're going to start seeing some huge opportunities and we may have to do some shifting of uh, coins, moving coins around because some coins are going to blow up. We're going to have to take the profits and move it into the ones that haven't because the ones that haven't are lagging and they may end up blowing up as well. So you can definitely move around your, your, your funds between the different altcoins as one starts moving quicker than the other. All right. So we'll talk about that in tomorrow's session. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up the session for today. Again, focus this week for me is going to be on US dollar CAD. It's going to be on the, the rate decisions coming out this week as well. We've got two rate decisions. One is going to be this evening with the, uh, the Aussies, and that's going to be at 1030 Eastern Standard Time. They're expecting to keep the rates unchanged. And then we have the, on Wednesday, we have the Bank of Canada also with a rate decision, and they are looking to keep their rates unchanged as well. So that might just set the tone for the rest of the year as we start looking into the next year uh, in 2022 of uh, what the feds are going to do. What are the central banks going to do based on rate decision? We know that next week we have, I believe next week, uh, the 15th, we have a rate decision also out in the U.S. So again, this type of tone for the 2021 is probably going to be stand aside, but the next, next year is going to be where things are going to start really heating up. Uh, but everything is going to come back down to the statement. What is the statement? What is the next move? What are they saying about the next move? We'll have to go ahead and read up on the statement and see what that is. So with that being said, uh, traders, you have a blessed week of trading. Focus on those uh, those pairs. Keep the same analysis. Stick, stick to the same game plan as you do on all your currency pairs. Same risk. Don't be diversified, but then changing the risk on each pair. Keep the same risk. Keep the same diversification, and you should be good to go. So with that being said, I'll see everyone in the next uh, video. This is Big Dog, signing off.